Hello and welcome to Firearm Freedom. This is going to be another First Impressions video. In today's First Impressions video, we are going to be talking about the Velocity Firearms VMAC 9. And quickly guys, before this video starts off, there is a link down in the description to the Firearm Freedom Merchandise Store. That is currently live and anything you purchase from that Firearm Freedom Store will directly go to support what we do here on the channel. While you're down there, if you enjoy the content that's coming out here on the Firearm Freedom YouTube channel, hit that subscribe button, smash that like button, it really helps us out. Now, full disclosure guys, you know I have done reviews for Atlantic Firearms in the past. This would be another firearm that I have purchased directly from Atlantic Firearms. These guys are consistently in stock on their website for around $369, and that is one of the first major pros about this little Mac 11 clone is the price point. It is extremely affordable, and unfortunately the only downfall is they go out of stock very quickly over at Atlantic Firearms. So if you do want to grab one, you're going to want to head over there. Unfortunately, I can't post links here on YouTube. They do not tell me to do any sort of a positive review in exchange for funds or anything like that. They don't sponsor the channel. They simply give me a small discount off of the firearm, and they actually encourage me to do a negative review if a gun is performing poorly, and they continue to have some of the best customer service that I have ever experienced at an online firearm retailer. So definitely go check those guys out. They are pretty awesome. I have to say, guys, I am really surprised that more people do not know about Velocity Firearms or the VMAX series of pistols that they make. The reality of it is, guys, is there's not any other company on the market today that makes an exact replica of an original Mac 11 or Mac 10. And for all of us that have loved seeing the Mac 11 in every cool 80s and 90s movies, it's always really cool to see these guys in film. And me growing up, I've always wanted one. There's a couple of really cool features about this gun, and first and foremost, as you heard earlier in the video, is the price point. I really respect the fact that Velocity does not overcharge for something that really is just kind of folded sheet metal. There are other companies out there that do kind of charge an arm and a leg for a design that is just really not worth it for just the materials that are involved in it. Not only can you find it on Atlantic Firearms, but you can actually find it readily available on Velocity's website for around the exact same price. It's around $369. Aside from price point, one of the first questions that I have to ask about a gun like this is the reliability. How is it performing at the range? Is it experiencing issues? Is it ammo picky? We fired a total of 200 rounds at the first impressions range day with this gun. And I'm proud to say we had absolutely no malfunctions of any type from out of box to round 200. And 150 rounds of that was standard 115 grain Wolf steel case. And 50 rounds of that was 115 grain brass Magtech ammunition. So it chugged along through that with no hiccups whatsoever. And on top of that, the ejection pattern was a solid stream out the ejection port. There were no variances flying all over the place, which is exactly what I like to see in a small nine millimeter like this. Whenever I start seeing sporadic ejection, that's generally a sign that you might have a hiccup every now and again. I was honestly shocked. I, I wasn't really sure what to expect with this gun. There are very few videos out there on YouTube today, and I'm proud to finally get this guy some screen time because I think the company deserves a little bit of recognition for this. And and I can totally see these getting much more popular than they already are. Many of you might be wondering how exact is this Velocity VMAC 9 to a standard real Mac 11. It is accurate all over the entire gun other than the charging handle. And I can tell you guys from personal experience of shooting actual full auto Mac 11s that this is a much needed upgrade. As you guys can see there, the charging handle is an extended version of the standard. The standard charging handle on a Mac 11 is very, very slim and it's hard to get to. In fact, it's pretty easy to cut your fingers open on this little track here that runs on top of the gun on the real submachine gun. And it doesn't change the overall appearance at all on the gun. The thread pitch is the same. Unfortunately, there is only one suppressor that I know of on the market that actually makes an adapter for this thread pitch, and that is going to be the Bowers Verse 
series of suppressors. Bowers actually does make an adapter for this. Now, in the future, I would love to see Velocity come out with the exact same gun. Specifically, this model is the VMAC 9-100. I would love to see the Dash 100 come out with everything the same other than a half by 28 threaded barrel. It's actually fairly simple to change the barrel out on these. It requires a very minimal amount of gunsmithing. There's just a roll pin back here that you need to drive out. And there are half by 28 barrels available on the market. So one note to Velocity, if they wanted to make these even more of a hot seller would be to make another model with that threaded barrel. I think that would just knock it out of the park completely. And this thing would be a blast to run suppressed. Now, aside from that, the other characteristics that make it a little bit different from the standard submachine gun is unfortunately because of our silly laws here in the US, this has to be a closed bolt rather than an open bolt. The original design was an open bolt design. The safety is in the exact same spot that it would be on a real submachine gun, and it does have 360 degree rotation, which is the same on the standard machine gun as well. The only thing that's different is on the real machine gun, you would have a selector switch somewhere here on the opposite side of the gun for either semi or full auto function. And I will say guys, the overall fit and finish of this gun, even though it's just a parkerized piece of sheet metal overall, is pretty solid. There's no rough welds anywhere. There's no big gouges taken out. I mean, the gun really does look great. And compared to some Mac 11s that are out there on the market, some real sub guns, this actually has a much better finish than they do. The grip is gonna feel the exact same, but there is going to be a difference in width on the back. So that is something to note because of what we're gonna be talking about here in a bit. And you will also notice that because of the differences in designs internally, there is no ability to put a standard Mac 11 stock on the back here. Normally, you would see a Mac 11 with a collapsible stock in the rear, and that would actually go in through two channels that are here in the back of the gun. Obviously, because this is a semi-auto design, there is none of that because there are blocks inside here, not purposely because of the stock, but because of the way that the bolt and recoil system is designed. Underneath as well, this would be normally where a standard full-auto stock would attach. However, with that being said, you'll notice that block there where the recoil spring is going backwards and the trigger mechanism is. So because of that, you cannot install a standard stock. The sight picture on the back of the gun is definitely very crude. It's just three holes and that is standard with pretty much any Mac 11 that you're going to see out there. At first, I tried this bottom sight picture and it did not even get me on paper at 20 yards. So I would imagine that is a much longer distance sight aperture. I ended up just using this little sight aperture all the way up to the top and that got me right on paper. And I have to say guys, overall the shootability of this gun was pretty freaking phenomenal. It was very accurate downrange, and that was something, again, I was not expecting, but I was actually getting good groups out of this gun, which made me even more excited about that. I moved it over to the steel plate rack, and I was nailing those steel plates with ease with this gun, which was, again, shocking. I found myself smiling more, really, than I ever have in a long time at a range day with this gun just because of how fun it was to shoot. Well, the one thing I will say when it comes to shootability and somewhat of a con, not to this VMAC 9 specifically, but just to the Mac 11 design as a whole, the overall ergos of this gun are not very comfortable. In fact, they're pretty horrendous. It is just a stamped sheet metal grip that is very wide and you'll have a pretty sharp trigger guard here that your fingers do ride up against. So you may want to throw on some gloves when you're shooting this gun, just so that way it's a little bit more comfortable around the trigger guard. And then it does have somewhat of an odd recoil impulse. Now I want to note for sure before I go into how the recoil feels that it is not stout recoil. The gun actually recoils very, very low. It just has a very weird muzzle flip. It has kind of like a back and forth movement, almost like you're shooting a Glock with a large large suppressor on the end of it. It just wants to rotate back and forth kind of like a wave and that's because of all this mass up here on the top part of the gun. As soon as that bolt is moving to the rear, the entire gun moves backwards, but then as it lurches forward, the entire gun kind of dives down and goes back up again. So when you are using this gun for some rapid fire, you will definitely feel a lot of odd recoil. You just gotta go ahead and hold it tight and you still are gonna get pretty good groups. Now the trigger pull for this gun is another really 
really impressive thing about a $369 Mac 11 clone. As you can see, we have a very slight amount of take up here that is actually really smooth and you can't really feel the wall. All of a sudden it just kind of breaks on you. So we're gonna give it a smooth pull back. You're gonna hit a little wall and then you're gonna get your really crisp break. There's not a lot of over travel after that break. And the reset is the only difficult thing to show you guys on camera here. It is very, very tough to rack this bolt back while you are pulling the trigger to the rear. And it almost kind of feels like you are breaking the gun in the process. But I'm gonna do it just to show you guys the reset. You're gonna give the bolt a really hard pull back and that is going to reset the trigger. So we're gonna go out to reset, which is right about there. You got a little bit of over travel and then the break again. You will notice in the back here, this kind of horrendous looking Masterpiece Arms slash Tapco magazine. This is a standard 30 round magazine. This particular Mac 11 has a Sten gun magazine well. So that is actually what has been known for a long time to be the more desired mag well for these guns. The original Cobra Mac 11s had a Zytel pattern magazine, so it was kind of this polymer magazine that would work really well. Unfortunately, those magazines, when these guns really first started getting produced in modern times, were a little bit tougher to come by and Sten mags were much more plentiful. Of course, nowadays, the Zytel mags are actually being somewhat made again, and they're about 30 bucks a pop, and the Sten gun mags are a little bit harder to find. So it's kind of the opposite of what was originally intended with this gun, but you can find surplus Sten mags still on the market today on some various online retailers, and depending on condition, you're looking at about 15 to $20 per magazine. Keep in mind, the condition is gonna vary a lot there, and you may have some magazines that you have to clean up. This, to my knowledge, was made by Tapco and kind of marketed by Masterpiece Arms for a Sten Gun Mac 11 magazine that is polymer. You have polymer feed lips and then a steel base plate on the bottom, which is pretty typical for Tapco magazines, and as you can see, it has kind of like a Tapco-ish design. Now, from where I've seen on Masterpiece Arms' website and some other websites online, it seems that these magazines may actually be discontinued. I don't know if there's any factual evidence for that or if it's just certain websites that show it. Velocity Firearms on their website, the photos show original metal Sten gun mags with their guns, but in reality, they come with these magazines. Now, I talked to the owner of Velocity directly, and they had told me that the reason why they went with these polymer magazines is because Sten gun mags were getting harder to find, and not only were they getting harder to find, but the quality was kind of varying significantly. So they would have one come in and ship out, and it was just fine, it would perform flawlessly, but then they had another one come in that was maybe worse shape, and the feed lips may have been bent or something like that, because they are all surplus magazines, and they would get reported issues, not because the gun was having issues, but because the magazine itself was a bad mag. So they found a little bit more consistency with this polymer magazine, and being able to guarantee that the magazine is going to be reliable out of box. And on top of that, it cuts costs a little bit more because these mags are only about 16 bucks. I have heard reports that people said these mags are a little bit less reliable than the steel Sten gun mag. So it kind of goes back and forth there. I can tell you guys, I had absolutely no issues with reliability and these mags were a little bit easier to load than standard Sten gun mags are. So I may end up picking up a couple more of these and then getting some Sten gun mags just because the Sten gun mags ultimately just look a little bit more at home with this gun. The Tapco style magazine here just kind of looks a little bit odd out the bottom with it being polymer and not steel. It is not quite as easy to just slap on a standard Mac 11 stock on this gun if you wanted to go about a Form 1 process and SBR it. However, there is a website out there called MacMachineGuns.com. I have been in contact with them about potentially SBRing this gun, and I think I think I actually might have to take the jump a little bit down the road. They actually make a really cool stock choice for this gun, and it's a micro Uzi stock. So it folds to the side rather than into the gun, and it's just a little bit different, but it still looks perfect for this gun. Now, how they would actually achieve that, being so the back plate has no holes to the left or right, is they would actually drill a hole and tap it into the back of your receiver. And there's a couple different options for this. You can actually send them your VMAC 9, and they're going to go ahead and do the gunsmithing for you, 
or they will just send you the stock without the two ears installed and you can just simply drill and tap the stock right into the back of your receiver after you've gotten your approved form one. Now, takedown on this pistol is fairly simple. It is just a bolt here in the front that you unscrew. The top completely comes off. So I did have some issues with my charging handle. It should kind of fall out and fall back in fairly easily once you pull it to the rear. Mine seemed to have somewhat of a tire fit, so I actually had to break out a brass punch and a hammer to get it out and to get it in. And you do have to situate it kind of perfectly in order to get it to start moving back and forth properly within the channel. So that's definitely something to note. Not really too worried about it because it didn't mess with the functioning of the pistol at all at the range. Overall, guys, that's pretty much going to wrap up this video. I absolutely love this little gun and I'm super, super thankful that Velocity Firearms came out with an original clone correct Mac 11 semi-auto closed bolt pistol. Now I would have no hesitations at this point to get their Mac 10 clone, which is in 45 ACP with grease gun mags. In fact, you might be seeing one of those in the future on this channel. If you guys have any other questions about this gun or anything else on the channel, throw them down below in the comment section and you guys know I absolutely will get back to you. Thank you guys so much for watching and as always, stay tuned for more great videos to come soon.